Good morning, good evening, and welcome to World of Warships Legends. My name is Robin, and today we will be reviewing the legendary British destroyer Daring. But first of all, thank you very much for tuning in the video. I really appreciate it, and I hope you will enjoy your time here. Been a while, isn't it? Coming back with a video about Legends might not be that exciting for you, even though the upcoming battle is one of the best I might have had in the game so far. But fret not, I have some content coming for World of Warships PC, you'll just have to stay tuned for that. But that's enough of these descriptions, let's take Daring to battle. And here we are, on the map Island of Ice, Domination Mode. For those that don't really know about World of Warships Legends, it's obviously the console version of Warships with some differences here and there. The most obvious being some tier differences and the matchmaking being 9 vs 9 instead of 12 vs 12. Daring is the most recent introduction to the highest tier you can get in this game, aka Legendary. And I have to admit, the ship is a beast of a destroyer. We are also running a special commander on it, which allows you to combine withering firepower with great utilities on the smoke, sonar and torpedoes. I will display all the skills and their effect on the screen, so you can get an idea of the modifiers. But back on the game at hand. I am currently in a division with a Minotaur, commanded by Sihalas, which is actually one of my work colleagues. The matchmaking shows no carriers, 5 battleships, 1 cruiser and 3 destroyers on each team, with no radar whatsoever and that makes us feel quite confident about trying to push the B-cap early on. Having played the ship on PC, which needs no introduction, as it's considered one of the best destroyer at high tier, I know what to expect from this ship and what are its limitations. You have extremely good main gun DPM with 360 degree rotating turrets, personal quick smoke and close range sonar, single launch torpedoes, good HP paired with a repair party, and that makes you a very decent cap contester. The main drawback of the ship is its speed though, which makes chasing down ships a bit difficult, so in practice Daring is an excellent ship to defend a flank or hold a position. In this case, however, <laughs> we will be aggressive and push our radio location with sonar active in order to root out this enemy Shimakaze. Having a Minotaur as a backup definitely is comfortable, but we have to dispatch of this ship quickly if we don't want to be entangled in a dangerous stalemate. A bit of a gamble pushing out like this, but the occasion is just too good to pass. The Shimakaze is caught in our nets with no real escape, though she does have battleships right behind her, and for safety measures I decide to smoke up while we finish off the Japanese destroyer and earn ourselves a first blood. At the very same time though, our friendly Montana goes down on the A flank, but having cleared the Shimakaze and now securing the B objective, we are now in a very good position to prey on the numerous enemy battleships in front of us. Making use of the few seconds left on our smoke, I start applying some damage on Yamato, proceeding to set a couple of fires on it already. Now, as you can see, Daring's HE does not deal that much raw damage, the penetration of the shells being just enough to pen other destroyers and superstructures, though. Our commander boosts up our fire chance all the way to a whopping 13%. 13, yes. Which, combined with that reload time, well, it's just pretty filthy sometimes, as the IGN battleship learns the hard way with another permanent fire. But it's time to stop farming and start spotting. The complete vulnerability of the enemy team on the middle map is going to be quite pivotal for our success this game. The only cruiser the enemy team had just got destroyed as well on the sea flank and that leaves mainly a fight between destroyers and battleships. So. With Minotaur's AP pouring overhead, I try to close up the distance with these enemy Kurfusts and Yamato. We are also in torpedo range, so why not make use of them? Most of the time, daring captains will often go for single launch attacks, trying to be as accurate as possible with their drop or just trap the targets in an unusual pattern. But in this case, my objective is to simply keep these battleships at bay away from the caps that we mostly control now. Lots of options around me as well, four battleships to spot and lurk around, though the Kurfust is definitely getting close. 
If the German battleship decides to make a rush for it, especially with its long range sonar, I'll have no other choice but to run, and that's what I'm preemptively positioning myself for. Only one friendly destroyer is left to defend the A area as well, and with my torpedoes unfortunately going amiss, we are already on the back foot. But if Discurfus starts to push, I will make sure to make him pay for it as much as I can. So smoke up and let's make our guns sing again. See, Daring has this sort of satisfying feeling of reliability that I really enjoy. Being able to maintain pressure with both guns and torpedoes, not sitting in its smoke long enough to be a torpedo magnet, but just enough to remove some chunks of HP, reposition while spotting and start all over again. I think that this jack of all trade aspect is what makes the ship so strong and sometimes unpredictable for the enemy team. As much as I would love to be more aggressive, we need to be very cautious. The enemy team is wiping the ocean floor with our allied forces on both flanks and I'm a bit concerned about being surrounded soon, especially in this now 4 vs 7 situation. The Corfest pushing B actually had me retreat at the right time. A few salvos in the open before we realize that a much more important situation is developing at A. Enemy gearing has been spotted and is engaging our friendly destroyer. Unfortunately, I will not be able to get an angle in time to save our ally. But the gearing is now caught in the open on quite low HP. I should be able to dispatch of him fairly quickly, but just pay attention to the shell hit ribbons and notice how much shatters we get. That's because gearing central plating or casemate is actually 21 mm which our guns simply cannot penetrate with HE. We still finish off the American destroyer but in hindsight I probably would have destroyed him much faster with armor piercing and saved myself the bit of HP he traded back with me. In all cases, high value target out of the fight. Enemy Montana, which was pushing A with the gearing, is now right behind that island. And once I realize that his guns are not pointed my way, I have to make a rush for it. The occasion of ambushing a battleship like this does not present itself often, so now is no time for caution. Torpedoes in the water and smoke deployed at this range, there's basically no way Montana is escaping this spread. The secondary guns do land some pretty good damage in return, however, we are able to conceal quickly. A few salvos on the doomed Montana before I focus my attention on the next target, Yamato, which is now attempting to capture A. The Japanese battleship is full HP, which is on one hand concerning, but on the other hand, also satisfying. Meaning we get the exclusivity on the damage, if we can play our cards right. In the meantime, the last remaining enemy destroyer was taken care of by our colleague, evening the odds greatly and turning the game back to an equalized state. We are going to set a double fire on Yamato during our shelling and reset the cap, but our smoke is running out and at this point, Sihales and I are the only one to remain. The two of us versus three fairly healthy battleships <laughs> should be a fun challenge, albeit uncertain. Right before I reached cover, I sent a few cheeky salvos that are going to hilariously set a permanent fire. Minotaur was out of smoke at this time, with an enemy Temeraire pushing from A. Having three more charges I happily share, especially in the position we're in. But again, there is only two of us and we won't spot anything if I remain in smoke as well. Keeping Yamato lit for Sihales to take care of, I have to turn my attention on the other two enemy battleships. Temeraire was last spotted far enough away not to be an immediate concern. But the second enemy, Yamato, is pushing up the rear of B and is definitely the biggest issue. So my goal is to go and counter him. And considering the HP we spot him on, this should not be too much of a problem. But hey, time is still of the essence and we technically have enemies closing in from three directions now. Torpedoes away in Temeraire's direction, once again these are not meant to be accurate launches, more of a delaying method while we sort out other problems. I need to set up a firing position and deal with Yamato. This is the time to take risks though, and Minotaur and I both focus our attention on the low HP target. 
The poor Yamato here is about to get really unlucky. We evade most of his return fire and smoke up, benefiting from the firing penalty mechanic. And we quickly get a fire, which Yamato instantly repairs, only a few seconds later to be lit almost instantly by a triple one, basically dooming the ship at this point. This 13% fire chance with a bit of RNG on our side definitely eased up our work here. With Yamato dealt with, only two enemy ships remain. Our torpedoes did not pose too much of an issue for Temerer to dodge, however, and he is entering this final fight with a lot of HP. Fortunately, our Minotaur's smoke cooldown has finished and Sihales can conceal once again. Long enough, I hope, until Temerer is dealt with. More cheeky salvos before I dash to cover and try to crossfire the British battleship. We still have points advantage, but with only four and a half minutes left on the timer, the pressure is definitely on. Considering the HP I'm in, I can afford to get hit a little, so I'm not going to take too much precaution rounding up this island. I have to get close and personal with this Temeraire if I want to deal with it as fast as I can. Once again, I try to wait until Temeraire points and shoot its guns at me to have him spotted while I remain in smoke. We do take a bit of damage before we reconceal though, but now we can farm superstructure and set some additional fires while our torpedoes come back online. And now it's time to be accurate. <laughs> Even after thousands of battles on both titles though, I still struggle to lead torpedoes properly when I'm not too impatient to dump them all at once. We could definitely have done a better job here, but fortunately, Sihales is going to provide a distraction by engaging Temerer on the side. With only a few seconds left on my smoke, I have no choice but to start brawling. Temerer trying to angle away from Minotaur shows me broadside, so I load AP. And fortunately, our torpedoes still managed to clip the battleship's stern, I'm sure a few seconds before his guns were reloaded, bagging our fifth kill of the game and our Kraken unleashed. That's indeed how it's done. Three minutes left and while we still have a very decent point advantage, the enemy team, with only Yamato remaining, still has cap advantage. For a second I'm thinking of sailing to sea and cap it, but considering it's now a 2v1, we have all the chances on our side to take care of the Japanese battleship. I am out of smokes though, but that really should not be an issue. At this point, I can be an extremely annoying gunboat, while Sihales repositions around these islands to get another angle for either his torpedoes or guns. If I struggle to finish off Yamato, he will be able to sail towards sea on time and maybe contest the enemy team's points. I also think that we both were out of smoke screens, so the caution approach to get some distance while I try to spot was favorable. But once I light up Yamato with its current HP, we know the game is basically over. I sent out my very last torpedo, one I forgot to fire towards the Mirer earlier on, and we engage with guns. We have 15,000 HP left, I doubt Yamato can take us out that easily, and I have the support of Sihales in all cases. So we aim at superstructure while kiting, set some fires, which Yamato almost automatically repairs, and with a comfortable two minutes left on the timer, the Japanese battleship is actually going to turn in our lone torpedo right after we set a double fire on it, just to add insult to injury. And this will end this game of Islands of Ice with a victory. 264,000 points of damage dealt, 864,000 credits gained and 13,000 XP earned out of a perfectly rounded 500 shells, 6 torpedoes, 19, I repeat 19 fires and 5 floodings, sinking 6 ship in the process. We achieved Witherer, Confederate, First Blood, High Caliber and Kraken Unleashed, turning this uncertain game in what is possibly the damage record on this ship for Legend? I'm not sure, but it's close. 4300 base XP, yeah, Daring definitely is a beast in this game. Same as it is on PC, if not more in Legends, I'd say. And I hope that this battle was a good example of how the ship can be commanded. 
Well, people, this video is coming to an end. Thank you very much for watching it all the way through. If you enjoyed this, leave a thumbs up, and if you did not, thumbs down, but stay tuned anyway. There will be more content coming for World of Warships or World of Warships Legends, hopefully this time without a six month delay, hey? <laughs> Until next time, you have a good one and you take it easy.